Do you share um, Iranian foreign minister's positive assessment of the situation as it is right now? Actually, both sides have been relatively positive about the outcome of this. And actually, the reactions of the two sides, in many cases, are more important than the substance of what was done. I think everybody agrees that there was no major breakthrough uh, at al Mahdi, but the Americans and the West actually made a more positive offer than they have in the past. And I'm very happy to see the uh, Iranian side reacting positively to that. That speaks well for the upcoming talks uh, at the technical level in Istanbul. Why do you say the reactions have been more positive than the situation on the ground? Well, they have been asking for some time for the United States and for the West to make a better offer than they had in the past. And I think in this case, uh, the West did. I mean, the P5 plus one did, in fact, uh, make a more substantive offer, which modified some of the uh, requests that it had made previously for Iran. And as I say, I'm very pleased that Iran took that as an indicator that real progress could be made. We still have to see the details. And we also still have to see, uh, have to go through another two rounds of talks before we find out if there's anything real to this. But in the relations between the West and Iran, uh, perceptions are often more important than reality. And usually, people come out of these meetings with nothing but negative comments on both sides, which makes it very hard for any progress from there. The fact that both sides have been modestly optimistic about this at least keeps the door open uh, for, the, for the time being. And uh, we'll have to see if it turns into really subsidy progress. A new book has recently come out by uh, Flint Everett and uh, Hillary Mann um, named uh, Going to Iran. Uh, they argue in this book that uh, the U.S. president and U.S. administrations, they have to take a, a strong and bold step in order to normalize or at least start the normalization process with uh, Tehran. Uh, and uh, they are uh, using the example of Richard Nixon going to China. What do you think about that? Well, a lot of people forget that before Nixon went to China, there were meetings uh, at the foreign minister level on a secret basis, working out the details of what would in fact happen. Uh, if in fact, the, say, the foreign minister of Iran and the uh, Secretary of State of the United States could meet secretly, work out an arrangement, uh, some kind of an agenda, which would promise real progress. Then, in fact, I think uh, you could have a breakthrough moment, but nothing like that has happened. And at the moment, that is asking a great deal because the preparations have not been made. Uh, no background is there. And uh, I'm afraid it's really premature to talk about uh, a major breakthrough like that. Well, in that case, if the talks continue, do you think the current administration is uh, capable of taking such a bold step? Yes. Uh, I believe that uh, President Obama, when he came into office, uh, was actually pushing for more engagement with Iran. Uh, that was severely interrupted by the 2009 elections in Iran, which, as we know, resulted in uh, really domestic chaos in, in Iran for some time. And also, the United States at that point, I think, uh, gave up hope that any progress could be made. And so they backed away from the, uh, from the engagement idea and began to put more pressure on Iran. He, President Obama is now entering his second term. Uh, he has somewhat more freedom than he had before. And I believe we're seeing some positive, very small positive signs from Iran that they aren't perhaps now prepared to talk in a way that uh, they were reluctant to before. So in U.S.-Iran relations, there are very few moments of uh, 
where the two sides see some kind of equilibrium and where there's a, a general sense that, po that progress can be made. We might be at one of those moments, but it's extremely fragile. Uh, all it takes is one incident, uh, one breakdown uh, in both either in perceptions or reality to change all of that in a moment. So I, I'm not overly optimistic. Uh, I've seen situations like this collapse in the past, but at the moment, we are in a better position, I think, than we have been for perhaps several years. If we go back to the book, Going to Tehran, the authors argue that uh, the way administration views the government in Tehran is completely wrong. And as long as they, uh, they view it in such a manner, nothing changes. Clearly, the perception of Iran in the United States is skewed. Uh, there is a distrust of Iran. This goes back to the days of the hostage crisis and the image of uh, fanatic young men waving their fists and shouting death to America. And of course, uh, in Iran today, uh, crowds of people gather uh, every Friday and shout death to America once more. My view is that the problems between Iran and the United States are not so much a matter of foreign policy as they are domestic policy. In, in the United States, the domestic politics makes it very difficult for anybody to make a gesture, any kind of a positive gesture toward Iran. If so, they are denounced by the hard right as being soft on Iran and backing away from American interests. Similarly, in Iran, it is very difficult to make any significant progress or to make any to make any real concessions in any kind of negotiations for the same reason that people are seen as being soft on America, the great Satan. And we've gotten ourselves into a situation which makes it extraordinarily difficult to have any kind of progress. That's why in this current situation, though, as I say, it is not uh, overwhelmingly positive, there's at least a, a small glimmer of light at the end of that tunnel, which is that the United States may be able now, or may be willing to take some modest steps toward Iran, and that Iran is showing some signs now that it may be willing to respond. If so, that's very, very positive, and it's a first. But we have to remember we have 34 years of unremitting hostility on both sides. And uh, it is not just the United States mm -hmm. that has a false uh, perception of the other. It is also in Iran. And trying to, to overcome the difficulties on both sides really makes this a very difficult puzzle. You pointed out the importance of uh, U.S. domestic uh, politics. Uh, some argue that if the White House decides to um, remove some of the unilateral um, sanctions against Iran, they may face uh, resistance from the Congress. Do you think that may happen? Yes and no. Uh, clearly, uh, we have a new bill that has just been introduced into the Congress in the last couple of days, a sense of the Congress, which would basically uh, say that the United States should come to the support of Israel if it decides to attack Iran. Uh, that is not helpful. And that is going to be, uh, but it's the kind of problem that arises constantly. Yes, uh, the United States, the Congress is going to push back. On the other hand, if there is real evidence that the nuclear issue is being defused, is actually being dealt with effectively, it will be very, very hard for anybody in the Congress to deny that reality or to, in fact, take hardline stances that somehow sabotage that. So the president does have some uh, room to maneuver uh, on this issue. Uh, one of the problems about uh, getting, making any progress has always been that the United States uh, had, didn't have the political will, because you had to put real political capital into making a decision, into making a, a, a concession or making a, an offer to Iran that was one that would be perceived as being useful. 
that, uh, as I say, we may have a moment here when the political will actually comes at a time when uh, it could have some, some positive effect. And if Iran and uh, Mr. Salahi are reading it that way, that this is a moment that may be useful to actually preserve and make, make something happen, I think they're right, but it's going to be very difficult on both sides uh, to pay the political price. Uh, but the, there's no question the president would have to pay a significant political price, and he would have to confront the Congress. But the bottom line is the American people really do not want another war in the Middle East. And if he can make the case that the danger of war is, in fact, receding, that it is going away, uh, I think he will have the support of the American people. And ultimately, I think the Congress would have to respect that. Gary Sick, thank you very much for talking to us. It's a pleasure to talk to you.